everyone, and welcome back. My name is Aduka, and I'm the Zombie Gamer, and today we're here on the Meerkat, <coughs> excuse me, Meerkat, uh, server again. A little bit of frame drop there, I do apologize. And, uh, we're gonna finish up our tour of what's been set up here. Over here we have Mortal Prince, apparently. He's gonna be coming on the rail system with us. And, uh, I didn't get much a chance to show this off last time we were in here. It's actually quite an epic system. If we come in here, we can take a little bit of a look at it. This is designed by our chief engineer of the railway systems, Senzo. And, uh, as you can see, he's put quite a lot of time and effort into this place. Um, now, this is one of about eight stations, I believe, now, that he's built up. They've all come out, uh quite nice. And as you come down through here, you have uh, various different lines which you can travel. Over here we have Senzo. He's kind of sitting out in his hard hat here. Uh, another one of our players in Mortal Prince here. And uh, basically how this works is you, you pick your line. So you can either ride the white line, which doesn't go anywhere yet. We have the green line, which is to Willow Marsh and Moria. We also have the red line that goes to Cliffhaven, the Meerkat City. And the blue line, which goes to, uh, I'm not too sure how to pronounce that jungle name there, but uh, we're just going to say Bubba Jungle and uh, Cottage Lake. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab green line real quick and press this button here to call our card over. Take, grab us a seat here and uh, go for a ride. Uh, where we're heading out today is we're heading out to Willow Marsh, and we're going to stop off, take a look at uh, one of our player Roxkin's area, see what she's done with the area, and once we're done in there, we're going to head over to Moria and show off what we're doing down there. Now, Moria is a uh, is my home. It is a group-based project. I have two people that do currently stay with me. I have Outcast. Uh, Mephisto, who you will see in the future, does quite a bit of designing with me, and we also have Oz, our uh, other server admin that uh, currently resides there too. And uh, give me one second here, YouTube. All right, and we're back. Uh, so what you're seeing now is you're just seeing uh. Uh, the rail ride over, and it does cross through some pretty beautiful places. Right now we are using the least amount of power rails needed to uh, keep the railway nice and cheap to build, because I will not lie, this thing spans probably easily over 2,000 blocks. And uh, at 2,000 blocks it does get quite expensive, so optimization is key here. Appears we have a couple of visitors there on the rail line. You can hear there a couple mobs fighting it out. Looks like we're coming into the jungle here, which means Willow Marsh is just up around the corner. Now, as I said last time, uh, this is an invite-only server, so everything you see has been done by. Uh, about roughly 30 people now. We are only a 10-man server. As you can see, 10 slots held up here. And uh, at any given time, you'll find about 8 of us on here, just chucking away, whatever. And here we are. We're coming into the Willow Marsh Station. So we're going to go ahead and hop off the rail here. Send it back up into queue. And we're going to step out here and take a look at our Roxkin's area. Now with the server being on hard, it is excruciatingly important to make sure we close all of our doors. Uh, unfortunately, zombies do still break through the wooden doors, but it's not too much of a big deal right over here. Mainly because the way it's all set up now. Uh, the one thing about Roxy you'll see through our various videos is that she is definitely a fun Turn the sound down just a little bit. Uh, kill the music here. Don't need Minecraft radio. Uh, one thing you'll learn about uh, Roxkins through our various videos here is she is an animal lover and a farm lover. I do not have the patience to have this many sheep. Unfortunately, it does uh, uh, 
Well, not unfortunately. Fortunately, it does allow for us to have our wool that we need. Chilling out over here, some chickens, and uh, here we are. Now we're gonna go up here to her house, take a look around. Pretty sure Rockskins doesn't mind. Now here you have uh, you have her mushroom farms. Now I built these for her. They're completely automated. Use piston systems to uh, release the water. Much uh, the design is 100% based off of Vito's mushroom farm design. Found it to be highly uh, efficient and optimal for what I was doing. I'm just gonna go deposit these here in our house. Now I will most likely get lost in here. In the event that I do get lost, we'll just cut feed for a few minutes while I figure out how to get out of this uh, lovely little place of hers. Now, from what I remember, we do come down the staircase here to reach our warehouse system. warehouse found. Well, apparently she's got something blocked off here. I'm gonna say that it's probably a cave system. One of the things I can share with you about Rockskins is that she does not like to explore without the aid of someone else. Not that I can blame her. Uh, we've both ventured through death quite a few times here on this server with it being on hard mode. Uh, we won't go down there. Well, let's see what's down here. I have a feeling it's her mine, but... Appears to be her mine system she's mining out here. A couple deep little holes here. Looks like we're hitting bedrock in a few spots. Let's go ahead and uh, head up on out of here now. One thing I do love about coming and uh, venturing to her projects is they are often quite organized. You can find your way through them rather easily. Unfortunately, some of mine are usually erratic, even though I am quite OCD about the design aspects of some of my houses. I'm going to hang it right over here before we go over to Moria and show off one other build. It's a... Uh, not the most beautiful looking project at this time. Now this here was originally um, a gentleman named Tao and I's house. Uh, we started building here. As you can see, I've got a mob farm I started to design up there. Unfortunately, it didn't quite go the way I wanted it to. Um, I did end up moving locations. Not because Tao and I had any disagreements, just because there was something else I really wanted to do. Originally, this was just a overhang, uh, this upper overhang over here. We actually hand planted all this grass up there on the high level. As you can see here, you know, he's got his enchantment center, apparently a little tree. Piston door system here. Various hallways. And all kinds of stiff. This is his speed potion dispenser. If it is, we're just going to go ahead and uh, nab a speed potion to make this a little bit. Nope. X dispenser. Just looks like we're hoofing it. It's alright, though. Got quite a bit of bread on me still. We'll take out this sheep just wandering here. Oh no, apparently somebody ate all the cake. What you're not seeing there is, uh, Rockskin was, ra Rockskins was raising her hand to proclaim she was definitely the cake eater. Now I could, uh, I could head out there either by boat, but, uh, since we have this lovely rail system here, I believe we're just gonna take that. It'll be much easier for us to get out. And everything you're seeing here was 100% uh, built by 
Uh, Senzo Oz, I believe this station here was actually built by Roxikins, with modifications done by Senzo. Let's see, we are going down to the Moria base. Now, Moria will eventually be uh, renamed to Atlantis, just because of its design. I was being pressured for a name, and I'm like, you know what, name it Moria. A uh, little tip of my hat there to my fond passion for uh, Lord of the Rings. For those of you wondering, no, I have not played the Lord of the Ring MMO, uh, just as I do not plan to play the Game of Thrones one. I feel that some games are just better left to movies. Um, and unfortunately, some games are just left to games. Um, Resident Evil is a great example of that. Resident Evil, when it first came out, the first one was pretty good, pretty decent. I was happy with the quality they produced. The subsequent ones, absolutely horrid. Um, I think they completely lost sight of where they were going. I thought they did a great introduction for Raccoon City. Um, unfortunately, I would have liked to have seen more of Raccoon City. I would have liked to have seen it uh, kept more in its uh, game design there. Um, then you do have the uh, games that have been made into movies that were absolutely amazing. Silent Hill, great example. Um, Extremely intense movie. And uh, equally intense game. I don't know if you've ever played it. If you haven't, I suggest that you grab the Silent Hill games, turn off all your lights, and pre prepare to scare the hell out of yourself. So here we are. We are at the base of uh, Moria right now. Now don't worry, this train station here is just completely for uh, uh, temporary looks. As you can see here to the right, I do have my personal storeroom here. A couple of us use it. Go ahead and exit out. Now what you're seeing here is this is actually what we call the biodome. Now the biodome is to uh, pretty much mimic the uh, surface, but at the cave level. And uh, everything you see, 100% hand-built. None of it was generated, world-edited in. It was a group of about five people. Those people include Oz, Outcast, uh, Roxkins, me, and uh, I believe Senzo might have given us a hand down here with a couple things. I'm not too sure. Uh, but we pretty much built this. All these lakes were completely hand-built. None of it was generated in. None of it was previously here. As you can see, it is all lit by ambient lighting. There are some torches still above to keep baddies from uh, spawning above our heads here. But other than that, it was 100% hand built and designed just to uh, uh, kind of keep this ambient look down here. Now, if we come over this direction here, and don't mind the frame drops I've been getting them. I did finally find out what was causing the frame drops. Apparently, I'm having a slight. Uh, uh, GPU overheating issue, but uh, isn't the end of the world at this time, you know. I did manage to get it fixed uh, somewhat, but the frame drops you do see are f the leftover side effects from that overheating GPU. Now what you're seeing here is a uh, uh, spawner system I designed. It is another skeleton spawner. I did wrap it in snow. One of our goals down here is all of our mob systems, wiring, and everything else we do design will be completely 100% coded, color-coded, and that's just to uh, keep things simple, easy for us to understand and follow. Uh, the beautiful thing about these rivers down here that you're seeing is that they can be fished. Uh, it was actually pretty humorous. I believe we might have been in the first uh, uh, 20 minutes near finish, and Roxkins was already fishing over off one of these little bushes you see here. It, you see Ozzy's Roxkins is already fishing. And hopefully we can get us some uh, cats down here to keep those pesky creepers away. We have had a little bit of a creeper issue, but through some unbeknownst voodoo, uh, they haven't really done too much to uh, uh, crops. Now what you are seeing here is you're seeing farm animals. Now the cool thing about these farm animals here is they were brought down by rail carts. And uh, it was quite an interesting experience seeing them come down. Um, 
another cool little <coughs> excuse me uh, interesting fact about this uh, uh, railroad here or sorry not railroad uh, underground area you're seeing is that at one point in time it was actually completely whole minus a ravine that ran through the center now you can still see parts of the ravine off here on the sides uh, let me see if I can figure out how to get up to one there you go uh, part of the ravine running up this way here and it uh, continues to run diagonally down that way as you can see uh, me, Outcast, and his uh, little brother, I believe it was, actually hollowed out a good portion of this. We also had various uh, hands helping us with this side portion over here, clearing it out. Mr. Uh, J. Sibs, a member of our server here, did a little bit of a strip mine down on the side. Now see, this is what we're talking about with the spawns here. Um, unfortunately, with uh, the lighting system we're using, we do see uh, spawns from time to time down in this area. So it kind of it's a little bit of a cause for a headache. Now this uh, storage area you see here is just temporary for the moment. Now you might be wondering, what do you need so much storage for? Well, let me show you something. Um, throughout playing Minecraft, I have never had a double chest of gravel. And uh, at this time, I'm not too sure which one it is. Here we are. Uh, I actually have a double chest of gravel. Now, let me tell you, it did not come from this area. Um, the double chest of gravel came in at another point. As you can see, we do have quite the amount of cobble and uh, resources down here. And uh, there are, is some explanation for this. If you look down that way, and there's one over to the left of me, to the right of me, and straight in front of me if I walk out far enough. Um, it is a, uh, uh, outline set of holes, and it outlines a very specific area, and I will show you what the outline is for. Um, during mine and Outcast's experiments, we, uh, uh looks like Senzo beat us down here. Uh, during mine and Outcast's experiments, we realized that mobs were not quite spawning how we wanted them to in our in our hostile mob farms. And uh, <laughs> apparently, he thought I was a skeleton. Almost got us took out. As you can tell, I do have armor, though, so if anybody decides to attack us, we are doing quite fine. Now, where we're going up to is what I was talking about, the ultimate experiment. Uh, Outcast and I, we were uh, noticing that we were having some troubles with uh, spawning rates. And through the science of... There's Oz. Through the science of... Um, of, uh, trial and error, me and Outcast realized that we needed to control mob spawn rates. And what I mean by control is absolutely stop them if we wanted mobs to uh, spawn in our designated area. Now, as you may know, uh, I don't know the number right off the top of my head anymore, uh, but I believe it's somewhere around the neighborhood of 126. Uh, hostile mobs will not spawn. Uh, 126 or despawn, I can't remember which one it is. I'll have to look that up again. Uh, blocks near you. And I believe it's after 30 they despawn. So what we did is we decided, you know what, we're going to hollow out a hole, 275 by 275. Now I believe a lot of you are going to be going, why would you do that? And uh, it, it's simple. If you want hostile mobs to spawn, if you want your farms to work, then uh, you really have to sit down and, you know, make it happen for yourself. Well, let me look at the time here. Looks like we're running about 20 minutes now. So what we started doing is hollowing out this hole. Now this hole has been a, uh, a large project with the help of Oz. Shards has came up, give us, giving us a hand, Outcast, Outcast's brother, my good friend Mike. Uh, me, Rockskins has come up here, swung a pickaxe or two, and it's all in an attempt to really perfect the uh, mob spawns. 
and uh, get them where we want them. Now the ultimate goal of this is going to be ta to take it to... Uh, uh, apparently this wall wasn't quite finished. I'll have to address that later here. Let's see, a little bit of explore exploration is always good. Uh, the ultimate goal, like I said, is to take this out 275 by 275, and then uh, um, take it down all the way to where you see the biodome. Now that will be uh, 275 by 275, and if memory serves me correct, it's like 1.9 million blocks if it was completely solid. Now as you can see, uh, ever since 1.8, uh, the underground looks somewhat like, uh, as Outcast refers to it, cottage cheese. It leaves for quite the interesting experience here. We got another ravine over here, and uh, various abandoned mine shafts we've come across. And uh, it's, it's really been a fun project. It hasn't been one of those, uh, you know, man, I wish this was over. It's, it's, been, it's been a blast. We ended up with something near, I believe it was 28 double chests so far, full of cobble, gravel, dirt, sand. You name it, we have it. Uh, three stacks of gold. I believe we're nearing 25 stacks of iron. So definitely, definitely worth it. Uh, the original idea for this actually come from a gentleman named DocM77. I don't know if any of you have ever heard of him. If you haven't, I suggest you uh, take a look at his channel there. I will leave a link in the uh, description. And uh, as you can see, we are, do have some spines going on down here from the uh, slimes. See him. Oh, apparently he was above me. And he almost took us out. But as you can see, this is a rather large area down here. Apparently a double chest I forgot to leave out. Or take out. Still left over there. And uh, eventually, the, like I said, this will go down to, I believe it's level 14 is where we station the biodome. And uh, once it's completed, we will be able to define where we want those hostile mobs to spawn. And uh, with the distance cleared out, they will spawn at the maximum possible rate within that, making that place probably the most dangerous area within a 200 block area of this. As you can see, it is quite expansive here. Looks like here we got another little bit of a cave system we unearthed here. And it's, it's been a really neat experience to actually see what the world generation is like by carving it away piece by piece. Uh, it's been an absolute blast just walking through here and mining. Um, when it's finished, the amount of resources we'll have, we will most likely never have to spelunk again, which is definitely going to be a, a bonus. Now, as you've seen me just tell Oz there, uh, originally we were <coughs> running a uh, train or a storage system here and we just uh, uh, kept everything in chests down here at this level and Looks like that sorted itself out there. So as you uh, seen me telling Oz there, we now send everything via train. And originally we were just simply storing everything up here. And uh, I want to say about two hours ago, I decided, you know what, we're going to take and we're going to send this all downstairs because eventually, as I said, these levels are going to go down. There's no point in having a huge storeroom that I'm just going to have to move. So we sent it all by train. Now let me tell you, 
It, it might sound like that was a great idea. Let me reassure you, it was the worst idea ever. Probably the most stressful moment in Minecraft for me. Uh, mind you, I have fallen in lava, been chased by endermen, uh, blown up by creepers with an inventory full of diamonds. I've I've been through some pretty rough experiences, but nothing topped this rail cart issue we had. And I, I believe it was the mass confusion that just made it worse. Give me one second here. Alright, we got the rail is clear, so we're going to go ahead and send this down. Now as you see, the train's going to go ahead and push these all down for us. And we're going to give it a few minutes here and just kind of follow it down. Make sure everything goes nice and merry. We'll just take the speed route here. And then grab a cart out of my inventory here. And now we are going to get stopped a couple times, but it'll be all right. So let me tell you, we uh, uh, we thought it was going to be just an easy little experience, quite simple, you know, nothing could really go wrong. Let me tell you, if it could go wrong, it went wrong. Um, we ended up creating perpetual motion with the carts, lost carts to lava, um, had carts glitch out into walls, carts glitch out into themselves, um, carts get lost. Uh, it, w it was a terrifying and horrible experience, not something I was outright enjoying. Um, thankfully, Rockskins came over, helped us sort it out. Uh, Senzo came over, and uh, we got down to the uh, storage station down here and managed to sort some things out <clears throat> and get it somewhat figured out. Now, this hallway you're seeing right here was just absolutely loaded with storage carts, and it was... It was a terrifying experience. Um, I had set down what was the diamond storage of the uh, the miners up there. And uh, couldn't find them, had no idea where they went. And it was just, it was one of those experiences that was just kind of like, you know, what's going on? Now, in order to combat that issue we were seeing, we ended up creating this uh, little machine you're seeing here, which is to... stop the momentum. And as you've seen him say there, you know, the momentum track gets backed up, which is doing exactly what it needed to do um, before we were having this issue where momentum would just keep and it was just a horrible experience, uh, not something we were really looking forward to. And uh, with this track set up the way we have it, now we can break the momentum of the cards, no worrying about lost coins. No worrying about lost cars. And uh, we can get everything dignified where it needs to go. And not worry about uh, um, lost blocks. Now, as you see here, we have um, uh, various railroad switches that allow us to take our materials to uh, the various different locations down here, get them sorted out where we want them to go. And all that good stuff. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how uh, some of this works here. As you see, we got a little bit of a cart that decided to be a bit of a rebel and uh, hop its switch. It happens. There's not too much we can do about it at this time. As you've seen Senzo say there, you know, this is still a big work in progress. What this allows us to do is just pretty much get all those materials <coughs> down to uh, this floor here and uh, get them set up for sorting and 
and not have to really worry about that headache up there of how stuff stores out. Now once we get them down here, <coughs> excuse me, I'll mute you here for a second. Got a little bit of a dry throat. Grab a drink real fast. Alright, that seems to be a little better. Um, it allows us to sort this out down here and uh, kind of just keep everything in a uh, easy, workable manner. And uh, it's, it's definitely uh, made everything easier to deal with. I really took care of that mess we were experiencing while we were trying to sort it all out, that is for sure. Well, it appears we got a zombie here that wants to be on TV. No. Apparently he doesn't know how to play nice. And once the materials get down here, it ends up in this uh, huge, massive, temporary storeroom. Um, I will definitely be shooting videos through the progress, highlighting you know what we've accomplished, what we haven't accomplished, and uh, definitely take you through some of our future builds. Hopefully sometime this uh, within the next two days here I'll be able to toss out another episode off of my uh, single player world. Unfortunately due to some data corruption while I was dealing with uh, a couple computer issues I did lose my single player world. Um, not too happy about that but at the same time it's not the end of the world. You know, most things do happen. It's not going to be too much of a big deal for us to start up a new world there. Uh, it actually could be quite a fun experience. Um, the only thing I am a little saddened by is, you know, we had just got our wolves. But, uh, you know, that's that's the beauty of games. Everything is replaceable. So with that said, I do appreciate you for stopping by the channel again. And uh, hopefully this episode will be edited up and cleaned up, some of the audio fixed, and uh, uploaded within uh, the next couple hours. And uh, definitely subscribe. If you have any questions, suggestions, please leave them in the comments there for me. <coughs> and uh, I will answer your questions, uh, take a look at your suggestions, and uh, see what I can do to apply them to uh, the way I record, the way I game. And uh, if you have an interesting build idea, definitely... Uh, attempt to build it. And, uh, thanks again. As I said, I'm Maduka the Zombie Gamer, and you have a great day.